So folks, as you know, on this channel, it's all about you. It's about you being prepared. It's about you being wise. It's about you thinking through things before they ever happen. I got a good one today for you. And unfortunately, this scenario that you'll see play out right in front of you happens all across the country. And it really goes to how safe are you at home? And so let's take a look at this one because, you know, quite frankly, this is our worst nightmare. Dead a night, you're in, in bed sleeping quietly, peacefully. All of a sudden you hear banging on your front door. Here we go. What would you do? Seattle police! They're kicking your door. They've yelled police. They're, they're not police. Now you hear a shot. The homeowner is armed. Door opens and they flee. Here's the question. Are you prepared? Could this happen in your neighborhood? Would you be ready ahead of time? And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the three things we always talk about, how to prepare in advance, how to navigate it during the crisis, and what to do afterwards. And so, folks, let me tell you, as we look at this, and we're going to look at it again, it's horrifying to me how often this has happened. And so let's talk about the beforehand and then we'll talk about during, and then we'll talk about after. But the full beforehand is incredibly important because I want you to notice that in this case, they were ready. The homeowners had already done some things which helped them. And let's look at those things. First off, notice what happens when they walk up onto the porch. A spotlight illuminates they're being on the porch. Warning one. Remember, in security, it's all about being proactive. Warning one. If you have your phone set up, it will notify you. Motion at your front door, spotlight comes on. Also notice that beforehand, they had installed a camera. So now, not only are you getting a motion alert, you're seeing who's at your front door. Folks, could that make a difference? That you're watching our, uh, folks in hoods that have weapons out approaching your front door? And so they did the right thing before. They had motion sensor lights. They had a camera to record it. They had thought about the door. Because notice what happens when the attackers try to get through the door. They yeah, open the door. I want to stop here. They yelled police. Folks, somebody yelling police in no way means they are the police. So one of the first things we would be doing right away is calling 911 and saying people claiming to be police are breaking into my door. That happens for two reasons. Number one, so you validate they're not the police. And number two, you get the real police coming. So they're yelling police, and now here they go. They're kicking your door. Now notice, that's a big guy. He's kicking around the lock area. That generally is the weakest point. He knows if you have a short lock, he can likely break that door open quickly and gain entry. Folks, this could have been a whole different scenario if they'd hit that door one time and now they're inside. So my question to you, have you reinforced the locks, bolts, and frames of your door? Maybe not be a bad idea because these guys had to work hard. And the point to that is because they had to work hard it gave the homeowner time. So let's pick it up from here. Now you hear shots being fired. Those shots are coming from the inside. Folks, I want you to understand that under stress, under pressure, 
you're going to likely make decisions very quickly that may or may not be the right ones. Now, here's the concern for this. Obviously, they're firing through or at the door, but none of the rounds are penetrating, which could mean that those rounds are ricocheting inside of your house, depending on what the, what the door is actually made of. So there are shots being fired. I'm sure the homeowner's thinking, certainly they won't try to come in if I'm firing at them. But unfortunately, they do. Now watch what else happens. Okay, now watch right here. They realize now the homeowner is armed and he's returning fire. That thug is lucky that it didn't cost him his life because look where the rounds hit the top, right where the head area should be hit, should be. And, and folks, I don't know, I don't have the rest of this story, but I would suspect that when you look at the body language of all three, they were getting out of there as quickly as they could, knowing this homeowner was not going to be a victim. Now, again, I don't know all the story. I don't know if there was drugs involved. I don't know if this was just an innocent situation where a homeowner was attacked in the middle of the night. By the way, that's happening all over the country. So as we watch this, and now you see the suspects flee, I really want to go back to what do we do before, what do we do during, and what do we do after? Let's go very simply through this quickly, the before. Do you have the ability to see who's on the other side of your door without opening your door? In this case, they had a ring camera. They also had motion lights. But folks, by the way, none of this stuff is crazy expensive anymore. I mean, a ring flashlight which is, or, or spotlight, which is what it looks like, ring, or there are a bunch of different ones out there. But he had the ability to look through probably his device and say, hey, these are bad guys which again gave him warning and time. The second thing he did again is to, looks like reinforce the door. It looked like that door had been reinforced to the point where it wasn't just so simple to put your shoulder into it. Folks, I've kicked uh, probably a thousand doors and normally they go right open because they're contractor grade locks. The frames are not thick. The bolts are very, very, um, you know, shallow and it's easy to access. In this case, the door was a little bit more um, reinforced, which, by the way, gave the homeowner time again. And, and then we talked about the lighting situation. Folks, it does not cost you a lot to put motion sensor lights up at your house. That should be an automatic these days. The other thing that they did that he did beforehand beforehand, he decided he would have a weapon and he, at least from what we can see, understood how to operate it. Folks, I can't tell you <laughs> enough. What you do ahead of time will determine what happens in the crisis. So be prepared, be wise. And I'd ask you a question. How important is it to you to protect your family and your children, and the things that you love, given all that's going on in our country. Now is the time. So the before, I beat that to death. The during, notice what the homeowner does. We can't really see, but what we do know is he's positioned himself at the point of entry, and he or she, and has determined that that's going to be a fatal funnel. Should they make entry, you're going to be able to target rounds which is exactly what he or she did. Now, here's the problem. If those folks had broken up and gone to different entry points, do you have a plan to protect? What if one tried to come through the back door? Is that reinforced? Is the, are there lights there? Is there a place of cover you could adequately control? Also, windows can be a problem. So we need to think as part of our home security plan, how would we deal with different types of emergencies at our house? And I regularly tell everybody I train, it starts with fire evacuation. You are way more likely to have a fire with smoke filling your home. By the way, in about 40 to 60 seconds in a smoke-filled place, 
your cognitive ability to process will start to deteriorate and it will quickly go to where you can't even think. I've talked to firefighters who said they found people at the doorknob that couldn't process how to turn the doorknob, get out and get to safety. So during the situation, it's important you have a plan and you're able to execute your plan with calmness. So in this case, the homeowner did what he was supposed, he or she didn't hear any warnings, but are they required? Hey, folks, they're not required. If armed people are trying to enter your home to kill you and or hurt you and your family, you don't have to give a warning. In all 50 states, you have the right to defend yourself, given this fact. So during, we're going to maintain um, a calmness, we're going to execute our plan, and we're going to have instructions for those in the house. Go to there, go to the back room, just like we talked about, lock yourself in down there. If they're old enough to defend themselves, then they need to have their plan too for if somebody does get in the house. So before, the during, now after. And so in this case, folks, the police come screaming in because you've dialed 911. They come out, they're doing their thing. They know that shots have been fired. Number one rule, when you're 100% sure the police are there, you need to tell the dispatcher they're here. I'm putting my weapon down and you put your hands up where the police can see them. Remember, the police don't know if you're a good guy, bad guy. They have no idea. So as they're coming in, it's really important. Tell that dispatcher, I'm the homeowner. I'm in the front living room seat or, you know, kneeling with my hands up. My weapon is nowhere where I can get it. And if there are other people in the house, you've told them to do the same thing. The worst case scenario in an after event would be to have the police inadvertently shoot somebody because they didn't know who the good or bad guys were. And so, folks, the after is important. Here's the other thing with the after. If you ever go through anything like this, listen to me. There's going to be trauma. It's major trauma when somebody violently enters your home. So immediately, whether it's through your church or through a counselor, begin to process that. Please, please do not hold that trauma in and think, oh, I'll be okay or be the tough guy. Uh, I've been in some really bad situations and, and, and I'll tell you that it was only when I decided to address um, kind of what was going on because I would remind everybody, God didn't create us to see all this craziness that's going on now. So we need to process well, sometimes pastors, skilled pastors. I wouldn't just call a pastor a trained trauma counselor, but I definitely would get help. And there are folks um, that you can find that will walk you through that. And so, folks, I just want to remind you again, and that's why I do these videos. This is all about you. If you watch this video and you don't go, oh, man, I, I got to look at my front door. I've got to look at what do I have that would pre-warn me. Uh, do I have ring cameras? Do I have spotlights? Do I have the capability to defend myself? Listen to me carefully. Now is the time. And folks, I just want to tell you and remind you, YouTube doesn't like what I put out. Um, I, I don't think I get out to nearly many of my uh, subscribers, which thanks to you, I have a lot of subscribers that are joining. So if you would do me a favor, like, share, comment, hit that notification button. I'm going to start getting back into this. I've I got sidetracked, as many of you know, I got sidetracked with the Secret Service assassination attempt. But I really want to pivot back towards helping people stay safe because I think we're going to see uh, a lot of violence in the days ahead. So I hope and pray this is helpful for you. I really hope that you'll take what you've heard, put it into practice, start preparing now. The other thing, and I'm just going to say it on my way out, you need to get self-defense training. It's one thing to defend yourself in, in your home with a weapon, maybe out with a weapon, but th there may be situations where a weapon is not warranted, so your hand skills are huge. So please think about that. God bless you all. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.